Revelation chapter 20 in the first verse. The Bible says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first res resurrection. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and they shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years were expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And he shall go out to deceive the nation, nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, and the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went up the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp, and, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the, devil deceived, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was, no, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you uh, for a glimpse into what lies ahead. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the entirety of the Bible and for the peace that each and every verse brings to us. We pray now that you would bless the hearts of the hearers, that they would uh, uh, grab a hold of the truth that is in this book, that you would bless them greatly. Lord, save the lost according to your mercy and grace, we pray it. Lord, it's in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching this morning on We Are Accountable. The lost and the saved alike are accountable unto God. Now, we live in a day and age where accountability has almost, almost been dropped. You know why? Uh, stand in the corner or uh, if you'll behave, I'll buy you something is. You know why that exists today? To remove accountability. Accountability is for God's people. Accountability is for the lost. We will give an answer one way or the other. Even Satan himself is accountable unto God. What does the Bible say at the beginning of the book of Job? It says, and the sons of God presented themselves before God, and Satan was also among them. And then he says unto Satan, O oh, Satan, where hast thou been? From the earth, walking to and fro and among it. See, his location and his deeds were accountable unto God. So why should we feel any less accountable than Satan himself? Have you ever, have you ever thought about getting, you know, did your mom ever do that to you? Mama grabbed me by the arm and said, Larry Lafferty, where have you been? 
And you know what? I better come up with something. You see what I'm saying? I was accountable to her. And you know what? I belonged to her. She, uh, I was her responsibility. I was accountable. Now, the redeemed among me this morning, give God the praise. Because you know what? I've got, I, I've got a wonderful thing to say when Jehovah God says, Larry, why did you, why did you do this? And I can cl claim the blood of Jesus. And there is no way that he can turn that away. Now the lost, they don't have that privilege and they don't have that blessing. So what is your excuse? Remember when all that were invited to the wedding and the Bible says, and one and again began to make excuse. I married a wife. <laughs> I bought some oxen. And he hadn't even tried. Y'all gonna buy a car you haven't driven yet? That's foolish, ain't it? And, and you know, and is that something stupid? That's the, that's mankind's type of excuse for sin. And, and so we see the first thing and the principle of this scripture is uh, whether you like it or not, you're accountable unto God. Now I want you to see the power of the angels in the first verse. And I saw an angel came, come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, I think the key to this text, and, and, and you can see it, there are a lot of things higher and more powerful than Satan. Notice it did not say, and the archangel came down. The archangel being uh, Michael and, uh, you know, help me out here, uh, Gabriel. Thank you, Jared. And it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't even garner them to do it. It was just a angel. So why hasn't he done this before now? Well, he hasn't been bitten by the master to do so. It's not that he doesn't have the power. He's not been asked to do it. He's not been directed to do it. So, you know, sometimes, and I understand because I've been there, when we're so fearful of Satan, remember, he's not that much. And so we see that uh, Satan is easily overpowered. He's easily thrown into this pit. He's easily locked up, verse 3, and cast him uh, and cast him unto the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him. Now, uh, you have to understand seals in this age to know what they were. If you put a seal on something, it was not to be opened by anybody but the recipient or the one that wrote it. You remember when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, what did the leader do? He set his seal upon it. And you know what that meant? That meant nobody else could release Daniel. Nobody else could re uh, relieve Daniel of his pain, of his sorrow, of his fear. But what did the leader do as soon as morning broke? The Bible said he ran down there and said, Oh, Daniel! And he broke the seal. See, once Satan, Satan is sealed, nothing can be done. So we see, first of all, and, and don't ever forget this, there, there are beings much higher than Satan. And also remember this, you are not one of them. You know, all about, the only thing I find in the New Testament is that we can do to Satan, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That, that's the only thing that I can find where we have any, any approach to Satan himself. About halfway down verse 5, to the thousand years be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And again, I want you to see the authority belongs to God because he's going to be the one that allows him to be released. I also want you to see all through this chapter, and I think it's mentioned six or seven times, six I think, is a thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years. 
And, and why that significant, church, it's being denied today. Uh, it's saying that that is figurative. You know what? If you believe that is figurative, you're going to question the rest of the Bible too. That, you know what? That, that is the danger of beginning to question translation and beginning to question the, the layout of the scriptures. If you question one part, what, what, what is safe not to question? Right? And, and I'll go a little deeper with that. The Bible says this, and Adam quoted it this morning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So who are you really questioning when you question the Bible? You have to come to the conclusion you're questioning God, right? And, and, and so we see then that uh, this is a literal millennial thousand year reign where Christ, where Christ reigns as king upon this present earth, the earth which we now abide. Uh, uh, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of men that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and for, uh, and for which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark, and uh, upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, that group mentioned in verse 4 uh, is the redeemed, is the saved. It, it's not just the one that made it through the great tribulation. It's all the redeemed that ever has been ruling here on this earth with the Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years. That's an amazing thought to me. That, that, that is unbelievable. But I want you to see, and a lot of people will uh, say it's a dominion reign, and I question that a little bit. It's, it's just man's idea, and what I'm fixing to tell you is just my idea. If we ruled over, over the whole earth, why is Jerusalem attacked? It, it mentions two attacks here, one at Jerusalem and one at the sons of God, or us. If we, had the, if we were under dominion of the whole earth, then no one would attack us, right? And so we see that uh, this, this Antichrist group, and I truly don't understand except for this, and this will give you something to chew on as, as your week goes by. Remember in the generation, uh, in Genesis, when the Bible says, and the sons of God began to take them wives of the sons of men. Two races, two different types of people, and I'm assuming this other race is still, after all these years, the sons of men. They are the people like uh, uh, Esau. You see what I'm saying? They, they are the ones that have always been anti-Christ and anti-God. Those are these individuals. Verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. You know what the desire of my heart is? Is to be in the, in the first resurrection. You know what the desire uh, of my heart as a father is that all my children will have part in the first resurrection. All my grandchildren will have part in the first resurrection. Now let me say this. The only thing that changes your desire to have part in the first resurrection is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we can say a lot of things, but most people really don't care. I don't think they're all necessarily opposed to Christ. They just don't care. Yeah. You ever met anybody that didn't even care about yourself? I've met a few. You ever wonder about people that are drunks or that use so much drugs they kill themselves? You know what the problem is? The problem is this, they don't care about themselves. And, and, and that really regenerate 
feeling of caring, of caring for your eternal state is a gift from God. That doesn't happen to everybody. And if you're, if you're concerned about your eternal destination, praise God for it because that in of itself is a gift of God. Verse 7. <coughs> and when the thousand years were expired. You ever thought about a thousand years? That's a long, long time. Uh, a thousand years ago, you think about, uh, if you can count time this way, it was the year 1023. And you know what? There are historic documents that go back that far. The kingdoms of England and Europe go back that far, and they have records of going back that far. And, and, and that's just unconceivable to, my, to how I can count time. Uh, you know, we are very limited in understanding law. That's why we can't understand eternity. It's because we can't even understand long distances of time. You know what? To me, 80 years is a long time. But it's like this to the mighty God of heaven. And so this, this distance of time, this amount of time, this millennial reign, I will bet to the lost will seem like a long, long time. How do you gain confidence in time? You ever wondered about that? Whenever, whenever I had my brain surgery, I wasn't sure about time. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, they tell me flat out, this may not help at all, this may be what you need, and it may kill you. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and so what brought me the consideration of time? That mine could end. That, that's what me. And, and, and just before I went back to surgery, I said this to Donna, you be sure those children are taken care of. You know why? Because I was concerned about my time ending. But since then, and, and the surgery did work at least some, you know what? Uh, now that I'm almost 55, that seems like that. I, I don't consider time. I don't think that I'm going to die next week. I told Brother uh, Eric yesterday, my, my one goal in time, if you can have a goal in time, is to see Bella Brown, and then I'm okay if I go. You see what I'm saying? It's, it, it's, it's about time. But here we find this incredible thousand-year millennial reign, and you think, you think how amazing is that is. But just remember this. The enemy is in there, but people are still acting their natural self. See, if a person's depraved and not saved, they don't need the devil to encourage them. That's who they are anyway. You see what I'm saying? That, that's how they are. Depraved people, you know what? Depraved lost people, you know how they're going to act? Evil and wicked. Because that is who they are. And so they have a thousand years to build up this and a thousand years to become more and more wicked all the time. Again, even without the aid of Satan. And they are becoming more and more depraved. And so that's why the city is attacked. Verse 7, they get some help. And when the thousand years were expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations. And in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather, to gather them together to the battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. Now, I want you to notice two things out of this. First of all, Satan has not changed. Character, unless the redeeming grace of God, an individual, a spirit being, their character does not change. You know what? The, the, the imps that rebelled against God and the, and the wicked angels falling to the earth, you know what their nature still is today? They're in rebellion to God. A lot of people bring everything on Lucifer. You know why they supported Lucifer? Because they were in rebellion to God. Don't blame Lucifer for that. 
They did that on their own. Again, if you do that, you excuse them from accountability. You know the, those rebellious angels who's accountable? Each and every individual angel that rebelled against God. Those are the ones that are accountable. And, and, and so we find, and I also point this out, the Bible doesn't say where they're at. Now it said, uh, it said the leaders that would rise up, those two, uh, two individuals, it said they're already in the lake of fire. We'll read that in a minute. And it says Satan is bound. But that leaves an innumerable host of the third, one third of all the angels that I am assuming is still here on earth because that's where they're at now. Right? And so we have all that rebellion going on and all, even in this thousand millennial reign. Verse 9. And they went up, meaning the rebellion, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the, and the beloved city, and fire came down from heaven, from God out of heaven, and devoured them. Now, I want you to see two, two groups. The saints, which are us, the redeemed. I also want you to know, notice just for a minute, it says a camp. What is a camp? Now, that ain't going down here and land between the lakes and pitching a tent. Now, there's a few of us. I know it by history, and there might be some here that know it by, by remembrance. What was Fort Campbell called before it was Fort Campbell? Camp Campbell. Camp Campbell. A military base. A military camp. So I anticipate us, as we as God's people will be very much in likened to a military, an army, with leaders and followers. And so this camp of the saints, man, I look forward to being there. You know, I tried to join the military twice, the Navy. And once as a recruit, and they said, no, you only have one kidney, you can't join. Okay, I get that. Been turned down for less. And uh, then after I got my RN, one day when we lived in the little brick house, a recruiter called me and said, Mrs. Gillespie, we want you to join the Navy. And I said, well, I can't. I only have one kidney. Oh, that's different for officers. Well, come to find out, I knew more about the Navy than the recruiter did. And he goes, you were right, Mr. Gillespie. But I've always wondered about an assignment. My brother, who was in the Navy, his assignment constantly changed. He was in a place called Siganilla one time, also known as The Rock. <laughs> it's a seven-mile island, and he and his wife and his two sons that were there for three years. They said you could walk around the island if you wanted to. Not much of a duty station, is it? But you know what? It's where he was assigned, and he stuck with it. See, that's how the millennial reign, I, be I, be I believe, will happen. It's not going to be this celebration time as the seven years in glory while we're waiting for the judgment of God. It's going to be things to do. And we're going to do them exceedingly well because we don't have this flesh to deal with. Verse 11, and I saw a great white throne. Now, I want to assure you this morning, you do not want to be here. You do not want to experience this judgment. This judgment is for who? The lost. Those of us that have been redeemed by the goodness of God, we have nothing to worry about here. In fact, you know what we're going to be? Spectators. We're just going to watch it go down. And you know, without the, without the hindrance of this human flesh, we'll be cheering as it goes along. Because we will be seeing justice done. And we won't have this flesh to, to hinder us 
And so we'll be glad about it too. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whom space, the earth, and heaven fled away. Now I want you to notice another thing. This is a sin-cursed earth, as beautiful as it is, and as all the resources as Adam pointed out, this is still, still a sin-cursed earth. You ever put out a garden and it not do one thing? You know why? It's a sin-cursed earth. It doesn't always do what you want it to do, right? See, in the millennial reign, the earth is the same. And I also want you to see that the earth is still subject to God. And you know what? According to this text, it's fearful of it. You ever, I, I've never been in court yet. Uh, I believe it's knocking on wood. <laughs> and I've never been in court yet. But, you know, it, had to be, it would have to be fearful to face a judge. Someone that had authority really to do what he wanted to over you. Right? You know what? It'd be, it'd be, my, it'd be my first impulse to fly away, to, fl to flee away, wouldn't it you? What about one day when speaking the gospel becomes illegal? I think it'd be our impulse to run, don't you? And that's why the earth is running. That's why, that's why the air, the heavens, is running. What does the Bible say concerning the, the, the heavens that we can see, like the clouds and the, and the pretty blue sky? The Bible says this concerning that, that they belong to the devil. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the verse exactly. Uh, the, uh, well, I can't think of it. But anyway, that, that's, that's his abode. And that's what's fleeing from God. You know you lost people? You know what you're going to do? You're going to flee from God. And why, why would you do that? To sit there and to be before him would acknowledge his authority. And still, after all this time, the least thing they want to do is be under the authority of God. And so we see that the very natural impulse of mankind occurs in running from the, the Almighty of heaven. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away. Get this, and there was no place for them. In other words, they are going to stand judgment. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. They're in front of the omnipotent God of heaven, and they will certainly give an answer. Ever, ever been before someone, and the only answer you have is, I did it. Now, I know all y'all had the same kind of parents I did, so don't give me the blank look. I did it. One time, I got mad, and I threw a rock. And the car didn't run anyway, but Mama treated it like a jewel. I'm like, Mother, the car don't run. Well, that didn't matter. It was a jewel in her eye. And when I threw a rock and broke the window out, you know what the only thing I could say? I did it, <laughs> right? You know why she knew I did it? I was the only one at home. And so, yeah, I did it. That's what these individuals are going to say. That is the only answer they could possibly give because there's no more running. There, there's no more running from the person of God. It's over with. It's done. They're accountable. Verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. You will be judged according to the books. I don't. <coughs> I certainly do not want to be. I love this book. It's a great encouragement to me. But the last thing I want is to be judged according to that. This is 
for the lost. Again, my only, my only plea that I possibly can think to give in any situation is to plead the blood of Christ. That's my only thought. And, and here they don't have that benefit. So these books are open. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Do you think this book is finished? Now, Pentecostal people, you know what? They don't believe that. They believe they can add to and take from. And it's just as inspired as the rest. But you know what I believe? I believe this is the full counsel of God. I don't believe it can be added. Read the end of Revelation. It cannot be added to. This is the full, real deal. So the only thing I can think of is we're going to be judged according to this, or the lost will be. And I think there's two other books that we don't know about that are actually mentioned in here. And I'm assuming they'll be part of the judgment. And then another book is open. You know, I guess the biggest thing when I'm from a from an Armenian when I came from an Armenian to a true Baptist is this that the book of life is fully finished. It was finished before eternity began. Mm -hmm. They didn't add Adam Lafferty in 1980. Add, uh, I mean, excuse me, Larry Lafferty in 1980. It had been there since the very before the beginning of time. Right. Yeah. And, and so that's the other book. That's when you'll see, nope, you're not here. Let me go to these books. And he'll begin to judge you at this. Because your book, your name's not in the first book. Listen, you need to pray and be strong and seek the Lord's face that you would be saved because if it's not if it's not in the book of life you will be judged according to this you will be judged according to what this book has to say now I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead now, I have dead underlined in my Bible. And you say, well, why do you do that? Well, Maney passed away, right? I assure you, Maney is not dead. Uh, uh, Her inward person is still very much alive. Mm -hmm. You ever met someone who's just spiritually dead? You can speak to them the glorious gospel of Christ and it's just like a blank slate. I have. I, I, you will find people that will actually ridicule you for the gospel. You know why they do that? They're dead. When it says, I saw the dead small and great. It means the lost. It means the spiritually dead. That the ones that's never tasted of the goodness of the second birth. Remember, that's what he told Nicodemus. You must be born again. And if you're not born again, what is an automatic assumption? You're dead. Right. You're dead. No hope. No, nothing to be done. And so these are the individuals, the spiritually dead, the one that has never uh, experienced the true love of Christ, those individuals are at this judgment. And they were judged out of the things that were written in the books according to their works. Now, you know what? I, I thought about this because I, I, I know a lot of people that died without Christ, don't you? Isn't you glad? Aren't you glad it's eternity? Can you imagine the amount of time, the way we count time, that this great judgment would occur? Do you think Madam Marilyn O'Hare only committed one sin? She'll probably take a thousand years just yourself. 
are how we count the years, right? Mm -hmm. And so we see every little thing that was written down. I don't sense that, do you? You ever lie to you, Mama? As long as you get by with it anyway? I know you did. I did too. I don't want to be accountable for that, do you? Line after line after line after line. You did this. You did this. And where I can say, I plead the blood of Jesus. And he'll look at me and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. No plea. And then what, if you have no plea, what is the automatic other thing? Guilty. 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 Right? Only thing that you, uh, you know what? We have some crooked judges today, do we not? I would say at least, at least six of the ones that sits in our Supreme Court are as crooked as a dog's hind leg. Yeah. You know what? The Supreme Judge of all things, he's straight as an arrow. You can't bribe him. So he'll be very faithful to say, guilty, 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 guilty. And then the, the most horrific part of all, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Now remember, uh, our God is all knowing, right? And God can't lie, right? So what does He mean about I never knew you? Who do you suppose I know very best in this whole room? Donna. I think I know her inside and out, but sometimes she still surprises me after thirty-five years. <laughs> I know her. And think about some of, of our newer people. I, I think I know pretty well uh, everybody. I know the young Clark boy pretty good. But I don't know him like Donna. Right. So he definitely knows you. But he don't have that intimate, close relationship. And so that's why he said, I never knew you. I never knew you like a son. I never knew you like a daughter. I never knew you in the saving of my grace. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. That's how he don't know you. Now the flip side is this. Do you know Christ? Do you have that intimate relationship with Christ? You know, really that's all that matters. I mean, Donna was a uh, out, we looking through the dining room windows out of our, uh, how far they've come so far anyway. I would say our root cellar, but it's not quite there yet. And we notice the floor is sloping at the windows. And uh, you know what, we talked about it a minute, and I said, I think it'll do us to the end. <laughs> you know, let the kids worry about the slope in the floor. Because I'm not gonna need it that much longer. You know, somebody will go by that place one day and say, that's where the life of these used to live. And you know what? They won't even slow down. They'll just kind of point to it and keep going. So why does it matter? The only thing you have is your never dying soul. The only thing that you possess is an, is an eternal inside. So what are you going to, what does Christ mean to you? Have you met him? Now, this is not Armenian teaching, but the Bible says this. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You know what the very first indication is? Is a spiritual awareness that you are accountable to Christ. That's, that's the entire meaning of this sermon. You are accountable. Do you know him? Are you willing to seek him while he may be found? Is that not the reason that we're here? There's a woman over at the nurse home that died last Sunday, week ago today. 109 years old. 
Now you compare that to AJ, AJ6. You think that she did better off than AJ? Well, it all depends on this. Was she a saved woman? Can you imagine living 109 years and not knowing Christ? Now, I knew nothing about this woman. I, I really wanted to talk to her when I first went to work there, but she had started declining actually very rapidly. And she couldn't answer my questions. She was a Methodist woman. I do know that much about her. Long time ago, long, long time ago, Methodists believed in a, in a salvation. I don't know what they believe today. A lot of them believe in baptismal regeneration. I don't know what the, I don't know if the woman was lost or saved, but I do know this: 109 years is a long, long, long time, and she at least had this enough time to consider the consideration of her soul. What about you?